disenfranchised society whereby a rapist could be charged with murder coming from side government. We see here that a little clarification has to be done. With the case that they brought up in India, whereby the girl died, we see that this is no longer a case of rape. This is a case of murder. Side opposition never disadvocated that rape is murder. We believe that rape is rape and murder is murder. We believe that if a person commits murder, they should be punished with, uh, likewise. They should not be punished with the cause of raping someone with death. We believe this contention falls to side opposition. Now before I move on to further uh, analyzing issues for today's debate, a few rebuttals, new rebuttals that we have to point out from side government. First of all, they talk to you about, the, uh, about these people having uh, rape cases increasing in India. We say the problem here is not with the punishment itself. We tell you that because India is an overpopulated country, the law enforcement is not good enough. The problem is not with the punishment, but with the law enforcement itself. We see here that South government failed to analyze this problem. Next, we tell you that these victims are irrational. They have gone through emotional turmoil because they have been raped. We see that this leads that the government is being a vehicle and a scapegoat for revenge. We believe that the government here is not here to prove and not here to serve vengeance, but rather to serve justice itself. If a government were to uh, allow itself to fulfill the needs of these irrational victims who have been raped, we say that the government is not fulfilling their duty. Now, moving on to the issues. There are four issues in today's debate, namely proportionality, the justification of the government, deterrence, and also the big question of death versus rehab. Now, moving on to the first issue of proportionality. Some government argues that because these people are rapists, because they, uh, because they invoke a certain intangible harm towards a victim, taking away their virginity, causing emotional turmoil, they should be subjected to death. But Mr. Speaker, sir, we tell you that this is not a proportional punishment. You do not punish a thief with death. This is a harsh punishment Point, for sir. what the government is trying to do. We tell you that in order to help these rapists, in order to fully punish these rapists in that sense, we say go inside opposition because we advocate the right to life imprisonment or imprisonment. We're not saying that we're going to punish these rapists as a whole. We are telling you that we are punishing these people based on the degree of crime. We believe that rape is not a degree of crime high enough for the death penalty. Next, the justification of the government. We tell you that yes, the government has the right to curtail your right if you infringe upon another person. We tell you that inside our position, this is better achieved. How so? We tell you that with life imprisonment, you are taking away the freedom of movement, you are taking away the freedom of these rapists, and we see that this coincides with the criminal justice system. We tell you by taking away the lives of these rapists, what are you doing? You are not only treating these people unfairly, but rather contradicting the whole fact of the criminal justice system, which advocates proportionality, which advocates rehabilitation. Now, before I move on to my third point, which is deterrence, Hitler. yes. All right, look at drug traffickers. We kill drug traffickers because in the end, their acts cost them party harm. We also want to kill rapists because their acts will cost them party harm. Look at the rape victim. Their life even is taken away. They are looked down by society. Right, thank you. We tell you, with drug traffickers, not only are you involving yourself, but you are affecting society as a whole. You are killing people with these drugs. You are trafficking drugs to these people and killing them. This is why it is justified for the death penalty to be implied on the drug traffickers. We tell you, this does not come with a parallel towards rapists. We tell you rapists are people who do things at the heat of the moment. You are not allowed to punish a person who does something at the heat of the moment that is irrational and unjustified. Now, moving on to the third clash. No thank you. We tell you about deterrence. The fact that side government tries to advocate that with death penalty, you will lower the rate of rape, uh, of rape cases and of rapists in the streets. We tell you that deterrence is a myth. We tell you that if these people want to do this, they will. How can you solve that, ladies and gentlemen? We tell you the only way to solve this problem is to help these people, not to cut them off. 
with side opposition, we've already told you that with death, this becomes a normality of the society. That people would think that, hey, if I wait, I can get out of this easily by just dying. We tell you that these people need help. So with this contention, it falls on the side opposition side. Because we tell you we are trying to make these people functional members of society. This stakeholder was not analyzed by side government. Moving on to the final clash of today's debate, death versus rehabilitation. We tell you that side government failed to see that rapists are citizens too. They fail to analyze this totality of today's debate that these rapists have the right to live as well. We tell you that the crimes that they committed are not a parallel and do not coincide with the degree of punishment that such government is trying to implement in today's debate. We tell you that government has no right to play God. The life of a rapist cannot lie in the hand of the government just because they rape. We tell you that these rape cases are not severe enough for the government to want to implement and administer this mechanism.